Hello and welcome to the special bonus section of Serverless for Frontend Developers. We'll be looking at how we can go about adding authentication and authorization to our applications. Specifically, we'll be looking at different options for adding auth to our applications, as well as integrating Auth0, a specific provider, into our frontends for that purpose. From there, we'll look at adding Lambda authorizers to our APIs in order to make sure that we're taking actions on the APIs that we want to allow after users have logged in. From there, we'll learn how we can actually check for required permissions using scopes on our APIs. So let's go ahead and look at the first section right now, different options for auth in our applications. Now, there's a lot of different possibilities when it comes to using authentication and authorization in our applications. And it can be a bit confusing that auth is sometimes confused for one, both, or neither of these two things. So let's look at what auth actually is. Well, it's two parts. First, it's authentication. Who are you and how do we verify that you are who you say you are? And secondly, authorization. What should you be able to do and what can you do in our application? Now, authentication, you might think of as something like a simple login with a username and password, or maybe something like a single sign-on with Google or GitHub or another provider. Authorization, on the other hand, is looking at something like, do you have permissions to use an API? And can we make sure that you have those permissions for any API you're using? Now, there's lots of different options for auth as both of these different components. You could use something on your own and in your own organization, roll some sort of existing organizational auth system. But you might also want to use a third-party service like Amazon Cognito or Auth0. In this case, we'll be using Auth0. But there are other providers like Okta and others. So why would we use Auth0 in this particular case for our serverless applications? And actually, why does serverless use it in this case? Because as a company, we rely on Auth0 as well. Well... One of the first reasons is Auth0 is an easy front-end integration. You can use something like the Auth0 Spa.js library to just add all the components you need to integrate with Auth0 and get things out of the box like social sign-in with Google, Twitter, GitHub, or many other possibilities. Now, you also might want to use Auth0 because you want to integrate with something like AWS API Gateway. Now that's going to give you access to Lambda authorizers, which we'll talk about in a future video, as well as things like scopes to determine what permissions you want each user to have and how they can apply those to different APIs that you create. Another reason you might want to use Auth0 is because they have access to a free tier, essentially allowing you to use their services for a set number of users without having to pay them anything or give them credit card information. This means you can get pretty familiar with the tool without having to pay for it and then integrate it into your applications and see if it works for you. So hopefully that gives you a good primer on authorization and authentication and auth in general and why we might want to use a tool like Auth0. In the next video, we'll start integrating Auth0, and in the next several videos, start to add all of the concepts that I've just talked about into our application.